Alexei, let's start with some of the world's key travel spots. What do you think is happening in Syria? How, is the, how are, they, are, are the big powers interacting in what's taking place in Syria? Unfortunately, I think the great powers have not a decisive impact on, on Syria. It's one of those developments when uh, the great powers are either supportive of uh, uh, the present government or supportive of the armed opposition uh, cannot really make a decisive move. Uh, Russia is supposed to have a large influence on Assad, but it's extremely hard to persuade Mr. Assad to step down. And I would even imply that if Russia tried to do that, it would lose whatever influence it has in Damascus. Uh, on the other hand, when I look at the efforts of the so-called Friends of Syria, uh, to bring down Mr. Assad, I also see that they don't have enough uh, potential. For and the this. U.S. is on that side too, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so the the United States uh, are very supportive politically of the armed opposition, and then we know that there are some Arab countries who are financing this opposition, arming this opposition. But all they manage to acquire uh, for for the time being is a kind of deadlock in Syria. So we have two forces. Are fighting each other and not capable of winning over each other. So what is going on in Syria, I think, is an example of a country which uh, has moved from a very decent state and a pretty good level of life in, you know, relative uh, for, for Arab countries in comparison with quite a few other countries of this area, uh, to a state of a civil war which is devastating the country and with nobody able to have the upper hand. So uh, I am extremely pessimistic about Syria, exactly because there are no answers. Nobody is, for the time being, ready to intervene. Uh, I don't think the United States are in a position to start a war in Syria. Uh, I mean, a, a physical intervention, a military intervention in Syria. I don't think NATO is ready. I don't think Turkey will do it. I don't think. What about Russia? Would it Russia will definitely not send the troops. Yes. But it will definitely support the so-called Syrian solution to the crisis. I mean, Russia is in principle against foreign intervention and against the policy of regime change through proxies. So I think that Russia will be still uh, insisting that we have to find a political solution. But after Mr. Kofi Annan has stepped down from his position of special representative of the United Nations. Uh, on, on this issue, I, I'm at pain to see what kind of political solution can be, can be found in Syria. It seems that everything will be decided on the ground, which is, which is extremely unfortunate. Um, in Syria, we see the US in one side and, and, and tend to see Russia on the other side. Um, in Iran, it's, it's a bit similar, isn't it? Because Iran is more complicated than this. Russia has actually supported quite a few international efforts to exercise pressure on Iran. We have supported four rounds of sanctions, yes. by the way, uh, in the case of Iran. We have supported all the uh, talks between uh, the leading powers of the world. We are part of those talks, the so-called six plus Iran. Uh, and uh, we are not interested in Iran to have a nuclear weapon. But at the same time, if we ask uh, ourselves, are we ready to go to, to support a war against Iran or what is called in the West, a preemptive strike. Mm -hmm. Although I wonder about the preemptive strike because I'm not sure Iran is getting ready to make a strike at all. So I think this notion of preemptive strike is kind of accusing and demonizing Iran to an extent, uh, which is uh, distorting the real uh, situation. Uh, but Russia is definitely not going to support a war or a strike against Iran. Uh, we think that a strike against Iran uh, will certainly lead Iran to make a nuclear bomb and to arm itself with a nuclear potential. Uh, in order to prevent Iran from doing this, one would need a large-scale military ground intervention in Iran, uh, like the one the United States have accomplished in Iraq. <laughs> Is the United States ready to occupy Iran? Because if not, then you make those strikes you put off the appearance of uh, the nuclear weapon in Iran for five years. But if you strike Iran, they will have a huge reason to arm themselves with nuclear weapons because they will say that's the only thing which can make us safe. So I think that we have to find a, a compromise here. We have to maybe admit that Iran has the or will have the potential 
to make a nuclear bomb without making it. There are quite a few so-called thresholds countries in the world who are capable of building a nuclear weapon but are refraining from doing it for a number of reasons. So I think if we admitted this state of state, uh, status for Iran as threshold state, but not actually making the bomb. It could have been acceptable for the Iranians. But if we say from the very start that we will go to war against you if you, are, you, uh, if, if you request in principle, you know, the right to be a nuclear power, then I don't think that's the right answer. The Americans are very close to backing the Israelis in that, aren't they? Yeah, I know, I know, and uh, I'm afraid that it will uh, lead first to an extremely dramatic situation in uh, this uh, area of, uh, of Asia. But second, I'm not sure it will be rewarding for the United States. I'm afraid that the United States are overstating uh, their military capacities. They failed in Afghanistan. Uh, or at least they are on the brink of failure in Afghanistan. Yes. They were not persuasive in Iraq. Basically, they have brought a kind of civil war in Iraq and they did not, well, it took them 10 years to bring Iraq from uh, a, a state of complete disarray and complete chaos to a state of a relatively governed uh, country, but at a huge price. And so, if they start a war against Iran, I think it, it may be a very hard blow for, for the United States themselves. And I don't think it is understood in the United States. Somehow it is considered that the US uh, can conduct as many wars as they want. But I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think it may have very bad repercussions for US leadership and for the US image in the world too. I detect in Russia though a, 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 a sort of deep-seated anti-Americanism that perhaps goes back to the Yeltsin era. Is, the, is that right? You know, I wouldn't call it uh, anti-Americanism per se. I would call it a reaction to American actions. And this reaction is not peculiar to Russia only. When the United States invaded Iraq, and if you look at the opinion polls at that time, you will notice that in Europe, for instance, France or Great Britain or Germany, the um, critical feelings towards this operation in Iraq were much higher than in Russia. It was up to 75% of uh, Germans or French who were against this. Um, occupation of Iraq, whereas in Russia the level of uh, criticism towards the US was about 55-60%. Mm -hmm. So without being a NATO country we, we had a lower level you know, of criticism mm -hmm. towards the United States on this score than uh, the closest American allies, members of the military alliance mm -hmm. um, uh, that unite them. So I wouldn't say that uh, Russia is uh, per se an anti-American country, but when you see bombs following, you know, in 1999 on Belgrade, uh, in 2003 in Iraq, in uh, 2011 on Tripoli, then you start to ask yourself a question, why all the time it is the American bombs that are falling everywhere in the world? And I think that Russian reactions to this is that once again Americans are bombing somebody. And people are not very interested by the motives, because the motives uh, are kind of, uh, uh, they, they, are, they are overcome by the constant repetition of the same pictures on the screen, that yet another capital is being bombed by the United States. And this uh, leads to uh, uh, critical and anti-American feelings. When the operation is over, the critical feelings go down. So if America had a more uh, moderate foreign policy, less militaristic, uh, less inclined to use um, military means to solve conflicts. I think that the level of uh, anti-Americanism in Russia would have been extremely low. It's a reaction to the way America conducts in the world. And it's not peculiar to Russia. It, you, you can find those feelings everywhere in Pakistan, in Turkey, in Latin America, everywhere. You're undertaking a, a, a resource development partnership with China, particularly in gas. Um, explain what what you're doing in that area, the two pipelines? Well, actually, um, whereas uh, the totality of Russian oil and gas experts in the previous time uh, had been going to Europe, uh, mostly to the European Union countries, uh, recently Russia decided to diversify 
its oil and gas exports. And especially so that China is a huge market for gas and oil. And not only China, also uh, the countries of the Far East, like uh, Japan, like South mm -hmm. Korea, like Taiwan, like countries of Southeast Asia. And so Russia is building an infrastructure which would allow to use Siberian oil and gas resources uh, to create, I would say, an oriental uh, leg for its uh, energy uh, exports. And so we have uh, built and completed at least one pipeline to Datsun, it's a city in mm -hmm. uh, northeastern China, mm -hmm. which is a kind of center uh, from where other pipelines go to um, other Chinese uh, cities and industries. And uh, we will be building uh, an important gas and oil pipeline to the city of Vladivostok, which is the biggest mm -hmm. Russian city in the Far East, from where it will be taken by tankers to uh, other countries. You're putting the LNG plant there? Yeah, I think so, yes. There will be a, a really, it's, it's a big infrastructure project, and okay. the Japanese are interested, the South Korean are interested. So uh, Russia is, uh, it used to be uh, a European oil and gas power, mostly. Yes. Now it is becoming an uh, Asian. Uh, oil and gas power too. And this is of course very important for us because first there is less dependence on our mm -hmm. uh, western dimension yes, of our yes. exports. Second, it's very good for, for the local economy. We have to develop the Far East. Mm -hmm. The Far East has been uh, largely disregarded uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union. And while in the times of the Soviet Union we had 12.5 million people living in the Far East, now it's only 7.5 people. Really? We have lost 5 million people who have moved for different reasons, for, because it's very far mm -hmm. away, mm -hmm. it's, the climate is pretty tough, and so people are moving to southern Russia, mm -hmm. or to Moscow, to St. Petersburg, you know, to mm -hmm. more affluent areas. And uh, we have to, to uh, develop this, uh, this area, and so this um, Asian dimension of our experts, and the infrastructure which is, built, uh, which is being built, um, will help us to develop the Far East, and hopefully uh, we will attract uh, investments from uh, neighboring countries, first of all from China, but also I do not exclude that Japan will be part of it and South Korea will do be part Do you have big it. reserves of gas and oil in Siberia? And uh, we have, yeah, pretty important. It's uh, in eastern Siberia mostly, yes. yes, and not all of them are even yet uh, operational, but um, Siberia is a big, big oil and gas tank, alike, like the European part mm -hmm. of Russia too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that uh, the biggest development in oil and gas research and production in Russia in the future will be Siberia. Just finally, uh, um, Russia was hit pretty hard way back 20 years ago when the oil price fell dramatically. At, at what level of oil prices uh, does Russia struggle uh, in terms of um, its own economic development? Well, Russia, uh, as an oil and gas producing country, uh, relying very heavily on oil mm -hmm. and gas, to my mind even too heavily on oil mm -hmm. and gas, because they uh, play a disproportionate role in our budget. And we have, of course, to diversify, modernize mm -hmm. our, our economy. Uh, uh, well, this understood, uh, still, of course, Russia is interested to have a pretty uh, high level of prices for, 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 for these commodities. Um, Oh, it has been counted that if uh, oil and gas price, uh, oil price, because the gas price mm -hmm. is being defined in accordance with the, mm. with, the uh, with the price for oil, so if the oil price is above ninety dollars per barrel, then there will be no strong pressures on the Russian budget, and the government will be able to fulfill its social obligations, mm -hmm. and at the same time to make investments in the economy and in in the infrastructure and keep a decent level of. Uh, golden currency reserves. For mm -hmm. the time being, Russia is on the third place in the world mm -hmm. now by the volume of uh, uh, foreign currency reserves. Uh, we have about 550 billion uh, US dollars of reserves and uh, we are number three after China and Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, this is considered to be an important cushion, especially in the times of economic mm -hmm. crisis mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you may need a kind of uh, fiscal stimulus you know, sure. to, to save certain banks, to serve, save certain industries, if they are particularly hit by the crisis. Um, if it is below 90, then we, are, uh, we will be un un under budgetary pressure. 
But there will be no catastrophe if it, is, uh, it does not fall below $60 okay. per barrel. If it is below $60 per barrel, then real problem may start. Okay. So, uh, in the last 10 years, the price of oil was actually uh, fluctuating uh, around $100 per barrel. Looking at the oil situation and at the constant tension in the Middle East and the issue of Iran, which is getting more and more acute, I think that <laughs> Russia will, have, will, will enjoy pretty high uh, oil prices because uh, if we talk about Iran, I'm afraid that will be the next war. I really? Yes, I, I, I'm serious. So you about think this. that the, the, the US will ignore your advice? I think that the United States have built themselves into such a position and the level of uh, the demonization of Iran is so high that it will appear as a domestic policy necessity to take some actions against Iran. And I'm very perturbed by the fact that Romney is criticizing, while criticizing Obama, he says that Obama did not start a military operation against Iran, but I will. And uh, Obama was not decisive on Iran, but I will. And uh, Obama himself, as far as I know, after the election, wants to take a closer look at Iran, and there are quite a few people who advise to make this preemptive strike. So, if this happens, it will be extremely unfortunate for the whole world, also for Russia, because, you know, the, uh, Iran is our neighbor. And what are the, uh, what, 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 what consequences this war will have, we, we cannot tell. It will definitely influence the situation um, in, in, to the north of Iran, where actually our borders are. And um, uh, on the other hand, of course, uh, it, will, it will boost the price for oil. But I would not like to have higher prices for oil, uh, even if it, is if, if it is imported for Russia, at the expense, at the price of a war in Iran. In this case, I would suggest a peaceful solution. I think we'll be more happy with this. Thank you.